Today, we are going to take a tour of the YouTube Creator Studio. You've started your adventure. Now you have a story to tell. But how? This is your show, RV Media Creators. I'm Garrett, and in this community, we will show you how. So let's show the world your story. In my Essentials of YouTube series, I briefly went over some of the things you need to consider when you're creating videos. It was the basics of what you need to know for YouTube. Today, I'm going to show you all the amazing tools you have at your disposal. So let's go and check this out. I am on the YouTube homepage right now. To get to the YouTube studios, you go to the top right and click on your channel icon. You'll see a few different options and you'll click on YouTube Studio. This will take you to your dashboard. The dashboard is where, it's kind of like your home screen, your home menu. This is where you get to everything that you need. Let's go over some of these tabs on the bottom left. You have your dashboard, which is your home screen, your videos, playlists, analytics, comments, subtitles, monetization, and audio library. Let's go over this home screen and we'll show you some of the things that you have available here. This gives you your latest statistics on your most recent video. So for me is how to edit vlog style, rankings on views, it gives me rankings based off of my other videos, the percentage is how well it performs based off of all the other videos on your channel. The YouTube algorithm looks at a few different things. It looks at the views, it looks at view duration, and then you get watch time hours. All of those are figured into whether your video is being promoted on YouTube. One of the keys to getting yourself out there and getting more videos and more views is to keep putting good content out there that people want to watch and really and truly once you understand how analytics work we could do an entire video just on analytics and i'll probably do one of those in the future but for today we'll just go over what some of the different things mean and you'll see i have comments and then you can click here to go to the analytics of that video you'll have your most recent subscribers here you have any youtube news right here and pretty much the rest of this is all that same stuff. Over here, you'll have your subscriber counts. I'll tell you how many you gained in the last 28 days. Everything on the YouTube algorithms is on a 28 day cycle. So YouTube looks back 28 days and sees how your videos are doing compared to the last 28 days. Top videos in the last 48 hours. Now, like if you look at Diary of a Family's page, you would see a lot more information. But because this is a newer channel, you might not get as much of that information. That is basically everything on your dashboard. You still have your options to create a video here or go live. Moving down to the next one, you have your videos. Here is your video page. There's two different tabs, your uploads and your live. I had one live video here and I'm looking at doing a live stream series on this channel. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that. So it will be coming soon. And then the rest of my videos, you can filter your videos based off of copyright claims, description, title, views, and visibility. Let's say you have 10 or 20 videos that you have unlisted. You can quickly pick those up and view those right there. If you have videos that have copyright claims that you need to get those taken care of, you can filter it that way. Titles, views, you have a lot of options on how to filter out all the videos because if you have a lot of videos like we do like on diary for family you're trying to filter through 400 videos so if you're trying to go through and figure everything out you're going to be running into some problems by clicking on you know 27 pages of videos by filtering it out by a couple factors you can make it a lot easier for you for you to figure that out when you select a video you have a few options you can edit the title description visibility now audience has to do with copa you can select whether it's made for kids or not here or you can set your entire channel as either made for kids or not i have 
made this channel not made for kids across the board so that I don't have to deal with it right now. So you can select or deselect everything you made or everything that's on that page. Now, if you select one simple video, you have all these, your options, you can add it to a playlist and more actions. You can download it or delete it forever. If you have a video that you just don't like and you don't want it to sit anywhere on your, vi on your channel, by all means, delete it forever. A word of caution for any videos that you delete. If you have views or watch time on that video and you decide to delete it, then you lose the watch time and you lose the views. If you have a video that has 150,000 watch time minutes, you might not want that video to go off your channel. If you don't want people to see it anymore, you can just change it to unlisted or private. Here is your playlist screen. There's a few options here that you have available. You can create a new playlist. You can search your playlists. You can view your playlists. Very similar to how you search for the videos using the different filters. Now let's look at what you can do in your playlists. Playlists are fantastic for grouping types of videos together. So here you can see I have my making videos on your mobile device. I have the different videos that, I'm, that I have here. I have whether it's public, you can make it public, unlisted or private. So you can make your own private playlists that nobody else can see, but it could be helpful for you. And playlists do not necessarily have to be limited to your channel. You could do a playlist of my favorite videos on YouTube. Videos like my favorite travel video, my favorite video editing channel videos, or whatever. You can put all those in your own playlist and then you can always come back to them. And playlists are, you know, pretty, pretty simple. You can start a new playlist, say, test, and when you have a playlist, you have all the different options. You can write some descriptions in it. The descriptions and the titles are used the same way as videos on YouTube. Don't just put a my favorite travels and leave the description blank. It shows up on search results as a playlist, but it also shows up with the description. So if there's nothing in the description, people might be like, huh? Put a little information on what this playlist is about. You edit title, you can edit the description. Right here in the three little dots, you have your playlist settings. If you're gonna delete playlists, collaborate, playlist settings. You can allow embedding, and you can add new video to the top of the playlist. So if you are adding more videos to the playlist, let's say you're doing a series on different trails that you visited in the United States. You can play my favorite trails in the United States playlist and allow embedding. You can put the newest video on the top. And so someone could always just go back and see, oh, look, there's a new video that would help them go check you out. And then you have your ability to share the playlist like you do a video. All you have to do is X out of the playlist box and you go back to your menu. Let's briefly go over analytics, but like I said, this in and of itself is a rabbit hole full of information and something that you would want to keep an eye on, but you kind of have to know what you're looking at. Here, you can tell my views, I had 254 views in the last 28 days, which is 22 watch time hours, plus 33 subscribers, and estimated revenue zero. You can tell my average duration of my videos. One of the factors YouTube uses to determine if they're going to promote a video or not is how long does someone stay on that video? Let's head over to reach. Your reach is how are people finding your videos? You have browse features, channel pages, notifications, YouTube search, direct, unknown, and other than impressions and how they led to watch time. 15.7% from YouTube recommending your content. YouTube has recommended my channel 3.7 thousand times. So that's a 2.8% click through rate and 103 views from these impressions. This is something you definitely want to keep track of. It's like this upside down pyramid thing because this is how YouTube is recommending your content. If you have a high percentage of YouTube recommending your content, you'll see a higher number and more impressions, more watch time, which means that your video is getting recommended. Now I'll show you a few things on what you need to look at to get your video recommended because it's not just putting a video up there. 
trust me. Down here, you'll see some of your other sources. You see Facebook Messenger, suggested videos. People were watching one of those videos and another one of my videos was suggested on that video. Then traffic sources based off your playlists. The biggest one for me is my Essentials of YouTube series, which is a good series. Check it out. And link that below. Now, this also shows you where your traffic searches are. My RV and Siri Monopod. These other ones that I put in there Final Cut Pro, Tutorial, Mic for Smartphone haven't really been searched that often. Quickly going over these other tabs we have engagement, my watch time hours in the last 28 days. Now, audience shows you your watch time from your subscribers and non-subscribers. One thing you want to look at, and it's something that I need to be able to work on on this channel, is my watch time from subscribers. Now, right now I'm at 80% watch time from my subscribers and 18% from not subscribers, which means that the majority of the subscribers I have are the ones watching my videos which is a good thing because those are the people that could benefit most from the videos that I am making. What you want to happen, you want this subscribed column to be, it's kind of flipped. You'll want the 80% here to be on your non-subscribed, which means that people are searching content, are searching videos, and they're clicking on the video that you're making. Now, once you have more views, you'll be able to see See gender demographics, you'll see age, you'll see a list of the top countries that you have that have watched your videos. So right now, 37% are watching from the United States and then people using subtitles. And then revenue only works when you're monetized. I'm gonna move on to comments now. Here is the comment section. You have three different areas. You have public, held for review, and you have likely spam. Now, other categories, likely spam and held for review, are YouTube's algorithms based off of what they think might be trolling or someone trying to do something inappropriate. When you are managing a YouTube channel, you'll want to keep track of what these are because you might get a comment here like, wow, what a difference in sound. Great job. Automatically held. That was a fine comment. I had like four comments here all on one video. I didn't see them pop up because YouTube held them automatically. I'm going to approve all those comments and likely spam. Let's check those ones. And both of those are fine. I have gone through all of those spams. Now I need to go and respond to all of those, which I'll do in a little bit. Going down to the next section, you got subtitles. Now you have the ability to make your own subtitles. I have only done it once. And trust me, to try and do it yourself is a pain. There are services that you can use to make subtitles for your videos. It's pretty easy to do. It's just very time intensive like very time intensive. You can save your drafts, you have a community. You have the option to have the YouTube community help you with subtitling if that's something that you really are interested in doing. And then you have your published videos with subtitles. Please select video language, English. Make this my default for my channel. So subtitles also helps with your YouTube searches as well because it can go off of the script on that video, which is fairly helpful. Next, back down to monetization. Now, I definitely have a long ways to go and this channel is very new. Grow with YouTube, you kind of can get an idea of where you're at and where you need to be if you want to make some money off this channel. If you don't, you don't really need to worry about monetization. Here is a really cool section. We're looking at the audio library. Now, the audio library is all copyright free music. Now, some of the music you have to annotate the artist, but these are all safe songs and music to use on your videos. It's not going to be copyright strike or it's not going to be claim that you copied someone's mu music. All this music was made specifically for YouTube. Now there's a lot of music here. Next is sound effects. Sound effects is, is the same as the free music, but it's just sound effects. If you want to add a fun sound effect like an air horn, aggressive motorcycle, something like that, 
go and search out the sound effects on the YouTube library and see what is there. Now back to the music, you have the ability to search by genre, alternative, punk, ambient, children, cinematic, classical, you can see all those, all the genres. You have your mood, angry, bright, calm, dark, dramatic, funky, happy, inspirational, romantic, sad. Now, if you want a specific tone for your video, search by the type of mood that you want the video to be in. You can search by instrument, you can search by duration, and then attribution. If you want to search videos that you don't have to put any kind of copyright information in search attribution not required it's really not that hard what i do is i have a text document that i have all of the information for the different songs that i need to put in the copyright information and then when i'm using that song i make sure to just put the copyright information at the bottom of the video and that's it there are some really really cool songs here the other thing you can look at is your durations you want a song that plays really long you have those and then you have this one here that is for short what i would call stings this is great if you're trying to make a cool intro for your videos you can look at these stings right here and you can play those and find one and you can search by mood genre all that then when you're done here you can click the x button now down at the very bottom you have a few options the very bottom one is creator studio classic they are changing and updating this create studios and if you can easily find something better in the classic and it's still available click down there and go to the classic view now here you have your send feedback if you have something you want to send to youtube and say make a suggestion on something that's where you send your feedback then here is your settings now settings are your channel settings a lot of this will make a big difference for you if you're dealing with monetization you want to set what your currency is here and go to your channel defaults here you have your name of your channel you can edit your channel name visit the YouTube account Okay, if you want to change your name, you have to go to the Google account section, not just this one here. Then you can put in keywords. These keywords helps YouTube understand what your channel is about. Now you can click here and I'll go and you can customize your channel. You can change your, your banner. You can change how things are set up. You can change all of these have the little tiny pencil here which means that you can edit that i highly suggest that you configure your home page i have seen channels that make videos but they've never configured their home page so when people click on your channel say they might be interested in what you're making they click on your channel to check you out and you have a blank screen here people are going to be like well this person really doesn't care you'll want to set up your home page to be inviting so people want to continue to be a part of what you're doing you can edit the view for two different types of people for your subscribers and for new visitors new visitors will have a video that you can choose i suggest like a channel trailer or a video that is very popular so when you click on it it automatically starts playing people will automatically get an idea of what your channel is about and then you can go and change your your channel settings keep my subscriptions private keep all my saved playlist private customize show discussion tab you have more options there and that setting once you're done you can click out of that and go back to where you're at now let's head to advanced settings on your channel here is where you can set if you want to make your entire channel not made for kids to comply with kappa or if you want to review your channel or make your entire channel made for kids i highly suggest unless you're making kid content don't click that one because your channel will never go anywhere they will shut the whole thing down you won't get any views other than the ones you can scrounge up manually moving on you also have the ability to account link a google ads account to your channel if you need to do that display the number of people subscribed to my channel you can check that or not you have advanced channel settings status and features manage a youtube account hide or delete channel if you want to grow a channel don't delete or hide the channel you want people to find your videos down at the bottom you have advertisements you can disable interest-based ads on your channel 
This is where YouTube and Google use your metadata, which I know a lot of people aren't happy that they do it, but they do. You can select if you don't want those kind of ads shown on your channel. You click that, it bars them from doing that. It's your option, but if you're monetized making money, you won't make as much money from that. Next, we're going to branding. Now branding allows you to add that little watermark that you see right here. The watermark when you're watching on a computer, you can actually subscribe to that channel by just clicking on that little icon. It doesn't work on mobile, but mobile you can just flip the video back to portrait where you can see it and then you can subscribe right there. It's not much different. You can also get creative with this. You can use the YouTube subscribe button you could use your own channel logo, whatever you want. You can replace it, remove it in the watermark. You can set a custom time when you want that to pop up as well. Now, let's go on to our next tab, our upload defaults. You can select defaults for all your videos if you want it to say a specific thing. Like if you want to say RV Media Creators at the very end of your video, well, that's what I would do. You would do whatever your channel name is. You can put that in there and save it. I also have some stuff in the description that I want to have in all my videos that I put there as well so that that is a default that will be there when you upload a video. And then here are the tags that would be default on all my videos as well. Now tags are different than, where is it, keywords. If someone are searching your channel, keywords would be how they would find your channel. This is how they would find your video. I would also suggest that you change your visibility. You have public, private, and unlisted. Put it on unlisted. This allows you to get your tagging, get thumbnails, get all your descriptions and all that done before your video goes live. That helps boost your video in the search results, which is a good thing. Now permissions, this allows you to add or remove managers from your channel. I have my channel here. I don't have anybody else as a manager, but you can authorize another Google user or a YouTube owner. You can add them to have the ability to edit your videos, to make changes and all that kind of stuff. It's like adding them as an admin. If your channel gets bigger and you need more help, that is a great way to do that. Now, next on the settings is your community tab. Now you have a few options. Here's where you can add moderators. Moderators are those in the chat that are highlighted blue and have the little blue wrench right next to it. They have the ability to delete a comment and ban a user. Let's say you have a troll on your channel and you don't want them on there. A moderator can go and delete that. As soon as I start doing more live streams, I will get a couple moderators on my channel. But if you're doing a lot of live streams or premieres, you need moderators. How you get a moderator on your channel is you go to their channel, you copy and paste the URL from that channel. It's fine, Diary of a Family. I will take this URL right here, I will copy it, and I will add them to my list here. Now Diary of a Family, our other channel, is now listed as a moderator for RV Media Creators. You can do the same for approved users, for hidden users. These are people that are basically like trolls that you don't want on your channel commenting or you know if they leave a bad derogatory comment or things like that. You can add them to this list and then they won't have the option to comment or to be a part of your live chats. Here you have the ability to block words. These are automatically sent to your held for review folder that you saw in the comment section. Let's say you have videos that are related to family, but you don't want people making nasty, inappropriate comments on your video. The easiest way to type in words that you want to be held for review so that you have the ability to filter that out before someone else gets to see those comments. You can actually block them out, filter them out, and that's where you're going to filter co bad comments out. Now, you can also hold for review any comments that have hashtags or URLs. So let's say someone is trying to promote their own channel 
on your live stream and you're like, I don't like people doing that, you can click this and that link will not become clickable. That's a really great option if you are trying to not allow people to go to try and build their own channel based off of your users. Let's save that. Let's look at some of the options that you have while you are uploading a video. I did go over some of these during my Essentials of YouTube series and you can go watch that if you want to as well. There are a few other options here that I will go over in future videos, primarily going live. There is so many options for going live and I want to show all of those to you guys. But being able to understand how the YouTube studio works and how that can benefit you is gonna be invaluable. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And remember, I'm Garrett, and I wanna help you tell your story.